Retrospect Backup supports disaster recovery, also referred to as bare metal recovery or BMR. If you lose an entire system, you can follow these steps to restore the entire system from a backup, either on a local machine or on a remote machine with Retrospect client. We're going to cover how to create a bootable disaster recovery image to restore from, restoring from that DR image, and how to rebuild a lost catalog file, restoring to a local machine, restoring to a client, and using Retrospect's dissimilar hardware restore add-on. Finally, we will cover a technical discussion of BIOS versus UEFI, drive sizes, and how those can affect your restore. Disaster recovery comes up when you need to recover an entire system from hardware failure or recover a system to a previous point in time if ransomware has attacked your infrastructure. You can also use it to migrate to a new system, including hardware from a different manufacturer. Let's walk through creating a DR image, adding dissimilar hardware restore to it, and installing Windows ADK and WinPE. We're going to create a bootable disaster recovery or DR image so that we can perform a full system recovery of the Windows operating system. This image will allow you to recover your system in the event of a system crash or hardware failure. This can be a system that Retrospect Engine is installed on or a system backed up by the Retrospect client. And it can also be used to restore a system to new hardware. To create this DR image in Retrospect, go to Restore Disaster Recovery. On the first page, the wizard will notify you if you have the dissimilar hardware restore add-on. This add-on will allow you to perform a full system restore to different hardware. If you do not have the add-on, you will see a purchase button to buy it. Retrospect leverages Microsoft Windows ADK and Windows Pre-Installation Environment, or WinPE, to create this environment. If you do not have this installed, you will see a blue link to click on. This will bring you to our knowledge base article for installing these components, where you can find links to the latest ADK and WinPE versions. First, you must install Windows ADK with the default option selected. Once the ADK is installed, you must install the WinPE add-on. These will prepare your environment for creating a bootable DR image. Once the Windows ADK and WinPE add-ons have been installed, go back to Retrospect. Now that your environment is prepared, click Cancel in the wizard and reopen it under Restore Disaster Recovery. Click Next. Now you will be able to choose the option for the architecture type. The two different types are 32-bit recovery solution and 64-bit recovery solution. 32-bit operating systems are mostly phased out, so you should create a 64-bit recovery solution. Next, you will have the option to create a bootable flash drive or a bootable disk image, or ISO. If you're creating a bootable flash drive, it needs to be at least 4 gigabytes, but cannot exceed 32 gigabytes. If you have a flash drive over 32 gigabytes, you'll need to format it to only use 32 gigabytes. If you are creating a bootable disk image, this can be burned to a CD or DVD using third-party software. Clicking Next will create this. Retrospect is now creating a bootable disk image that you can restore from. Once the image has been created, you will find it underneath the user's Documents folder by default. You can change this location during the creation process. One thing to consider while creating this DR image is whether you need to load drivers for your hard drive controller or network adapter, or any other device. Like the Windows installation disk, Windows PE comes preloaded with hardware drivers and will work with most plug-and-play hardware. However, if you need to load drivers while installing Windows, you will likely need to do so also with WinPE. We have a comprehensive knowledge base article called Windows Disaster Recovery Driver Guide that has information about how to preload drivers. Let's walk through restoring locally, rebuilding a backup set catalog that you might have lost, restoring to a client, and restoring with dissimilar hardware. Once you've booted off the DR image, you'll need to accept the terms of using the environment and the Retrospect End User License Agreement. Then you'll be taken to the main options page. The first option that we'll discuss is load drivers for network or storage adapters. WinPE does include drivers for these, but if it does not include drivers for your particular hardware, you'll need to load it here. We have a comprehensive knowledge base article called Windows Disaster Recovery Driver Guide that has information on how to load these drivers. Now let's discuss 
set up my hard drive before restoring. The hard drive you're restoring to needs to have a partition for Retrospect to select during the restore process. If you do not have one, you can add one by selecting the disk and clicking on Add a Partition or Logical Disk. You can make a partition any size, but we recommend letting it create the largest possible partition. You can leave all of the options as default, although a handy trick is to create a custom label in case there are multiple drives to know what drive you're restoring to. During the restore process, Retrospect will recreate the partition layout of the boot drive to the drive that you're restoring to. This means that if you have multiple partitions, they will be recreated and you can restore data to them after the operating system has been restored. Also, another good practice is if you have multiple drives, you should disconnect them during this process so that you're only restoring to the drive that you want to restore to and you don't have the option of selecting one of them accidentally which would delete the data and partition off the wrong drive. The next option to discuss is Map Network Drive. This will allow you to map a drive to gain access to a backup set, a backup set catalog file, or even the network or storage controller drivers. To add a network drive, you'll need the UNC path along with the username and password. Once the drive has been mapped successfully, it will now be available within Retrospect. Now we can discuss Restore Locally. Select this option if you're restoring the machine that the Retrospect engine or application was installed on. This will launch Retrospect. After Retrospect launches, the first task is to either point Retrospect to the catalog file for this backup set or to recreate the catalog file. To point Retrospect to the catalog file, go to Configure, Backup Sets, More, Open. From here, you can access the catalog file. You can see the map drive that we just added. In this case, we are going to recreate the catalog file. Go to Tools, Repair Catalog. From here, select Recreate From for the backup set type that you created. In this case, it was a disk. When saving the catalog file, you can save it to the X disk, which is the WinPE environment that is booted off of your flash drive or CD DVD. If you have a large backup set, you may want to connect another drive to save this catalog file too. Now that my backup set file has been rebuilt, we're ready to do a restore. Go to the restore menu on the left and click restore. Click on switch to advanced mode and select Restore an entire volume. Next, select Source and select the snapshot of the backup that we want to restore. Then choose the disk that we want to restore to. Retrospect will recreate the partition scheme on the destination drive. So you, if you have existing data on that drive, you need to migrate that data off or back it up before continuing. Finally, click Restore and then OK to confirm and the restore will begin. Retrospect is restoring the full system to a point in time. Once the restore is complete, go to the History tab and look at the restore activity to verify the restore completed without error. Click on Log for a detailed view. If there are any issues, please make note of the errors when contacting Retrospect support. You'll see in the log that it says System Configuration Restored, please reboot the computer. Close Retrospect and click on Finish to reboot the machine. There are a couple more options to discuss, so we won't reboot the machine just yet. The other Restore option is Restore as a Client. This will launch the Retrospect client within the WinPE environment and assign it an IP address so that you can add the client to the Retrospect engine on a different machine under Configure Clients. Once you've added this as a client, go to Restore under the left navigation and go through the same process that we just covered. The final option is adjust drivers to support new hardware. This is the dissimilar hardware add-on. Clicking it will launch a new adjust OS wizard that will examine if there are any drivers that need to be changed for the new hardware. The wizard will detect the operating system. You then click either adjust the OS to new hardware automatically or set parameters for the OS adjustment. Most people should click the first option. 
Next, it will ask you if you are ready to adjust and apply the changes. The wizard will notify you when it's complete and you can click finish. Now we will click finish on the DR wizard to reboot the system to its original state. Here is the rebooted machine after the full system restore back to the point in time system backup. Now you can log in and continue. Let's walk through a technical discussion of BIOS versus UEFI, drive size, and how those can affect your backup and restore. Let's talk about a couple technical details to consider when going through a disaster recovery restore. There are two types of firmware that a system can use, UEFI and BIOS. Modern systems use UEFI by default, but they can be set to BIOS. It's commonly referred to as legacy mode. The system you were restoring to needs to be configured in the same way as the system you backed up. A UEFI system backup needs to be restored to a UEFI system, and you cannot restore a legacy mode BIOS backup to a UEFI system, or vice versa. To change these settings, you'll need to contact the manufacturer of your system for instructions on how to convert it. Next, during the restore, the destination hard drive needs to be the same size or larger as the drive you backed up. For example, if you have a backup of a one terabyte hard drive, you need to restore to a one terabyte hard drive or larger. Even if the OS was installed on a 500 gigabyte partition on that drive, you still need the one terabyte drive. If you run into any issues during the restore process, you can search for the reported error on our knowledge base at retrospect.com under support knowledge base, or you can contact retrospect support at retrospect.com support contact support. Why do businesses choose retrospect backup? Protection against the unexpected. Accidents happen, malware hits, hardware fails and disasters strike. You never know what's gonna happen next to your data. Retrospect Backup provides data insurance with on-site protection on an external disk or a network attached storage like a Drobo, as well as off-site in the cloud. If you have a backup with Retrospect, no matter what happens, you can just click restore and move on. Retrospect, a store-centric company, provides data protection for businesses, protecting over 100 petabytes across 500,000 customers for over 30 years.